Hello, my name is Ryan Laferni. I am a librarian here at the Avon Washington Township Public Library, and I'm here today to talk to you about great graphic novels. So to start, what exactly is a graphic novel? Well, the term has been debated by historians, graphic novel enthusiasts, librarians, and educators for quite some time. To, according to many, the term sort of originated with the publication of Will Eisner's A Contract with God and Other Tenement Stories, a graphic novel in 1978. When seeking a publisher for the work, Eisner called it a graphic novel, though in fact it was a collection of stories, not a novel. He thought maybe, you know, he would get published this way. Though at the time Eisner believed he created the term, he later discovered he was not the first to use it. However, not until Eisner, with this new creation that on the outside did not look like a comic book, did the term gain much traction. But for all intents and purposes, um, we can define the graphic novel um, as, as um, Michael Schumacher in Will Eisner's biography defined it, to quote, book length works of sequential art expanded in scope beyond science fiction and fantasy and superhero stories to include biography, memoir, history, adaptations, and other types of nonfiction, end quote. So graphic novels are also trade or sometimes hardback paper uh, collections of ongoing weekly comic series, many of which are your typical superhero comics. These volumes collect a complete story arc are part of a story arc in an ongoing series. So for example, the Mighty Thor Volume 1, Thunder in Her Veins, which is shown here, collects individual issues in the Mighty Thor series, which was published in 2015. Um, it co collects individual issues one through five. And on the right, or on the bottom of the screen here, rather, um, there, there are shown individual cover issues for issues three and four in the Mighty Thor series. These would be individually purchased and collected to create the arc of the story, whereas in um, the Mighty Thor volume one, those two comics are included in the um, collection. There are many benefits of reading graphic novels, and it's not just um, for children. Uh, graphic novels can be beneficial for all sorts of readers in all sorts of ages. Uh, first off, um, they offer exciting, exciting plots and action to keep the attention of readers who are very energetic or reluctant to read. Um, they help you build vocabulary. Um, fewer words does not always mean simple words, since there are, is not as many, uh, there's not as much space on uh, for many words in the pages of a graphic novel. The words that are on a page are chosen for maximum impact. Um, they force text interaction throughout the book. The reader constantly needs to figure out the relationship between text and image, which is a very important um, thing to be able to develop. It develops reading skills. Graphic novels develop and reinforce reading skills like infer inf inferencing, demonstrating punctuation and grammar rules, and explaining figurative language. They can aid those with learning differences. Readers with autism can learn about emotions by observing the images on the page as they read the story. Those with dyslexia can read a page or even a book without feeling too overwhelmed by the number of words on the page. They re reinforce harder to read texts. There's many adaptations of famous stories out there, including Moby Dick, Treasure Island, The Great Gatsby, um, many works from Shakespeare. And with the classic, when the classic text is read alongside the graphic novel, readers can gain a greater understanding of the story. The best part, there are graphic novels available for all reading levels and almost any interest. So let's jump right in. What are some great graphic novels for kids? Um, and honestly, these recommendations, uh, I'm giving you uh, age categories, you know, um, kids, teens, and adults, but um, like everything, uh, um, an adult could pick up Amelet and enjoy it just as much as a child. So, speaking of Amelet, Amelet is an American graphic novel series illustrated and written by Kaju Kajubishi, 
and published by Scholastic Press. It follows the adventures of Emily, a young girl who discovers a magical amulet in her great grandfather's house. There are eight volumes in the series so far, and I believe one is to be published soon here or has been published. Um, amulet is intention grabbing, a uh, fast paced gateway fantasy classic that has tons of heart and whimsy. And it's, it's definitely influenced by, um, by Japanese manga, which I'll talk about here in a little bit. Another series that's a lot of fun is, Nor is the Norwell and Jelly Book series um, by Ben Clayton. Um, Norwell is a happy-to-go-lucky go Norwell. Jelly is a no-nonsense jellyfish. The two might not have a lot in common, but they do love waffles, parties, and adventures. Each book in this fun graphic novel series features three stories and interesting sea-worthy facts. Bone is a classic of the genre. Um, it's written by uh, Jeff Smith and it was independently published um, and, and originally serialized in 55 irregularly released issues from 1991 all the way to 2004. Smith's black and white drawings were inspired by animated cartoons and comic strips and, and are singularly, singularly characterized by a mixture of both lighthearted comedy and dark fantasy. The author Jeff Smith describes the comics as, to quote, a fish out of water story. There are three modern characters who happen to be cartoons in the mold of Donald Duck or Bugs Bunny who get lost in the fairy tale valley. They spend a year there and make friends and enemies and get caught up in trials and tribulations of the valley and get involved even with the war, end quote. Bone is a great introduction to fantasy comics for children. It's, it's funny, it's lively, it's a little bit dark. Um, and I'll, Many people have compared it to Lord of the Rings even. So as I noted, you, graphic novels can, um, are really great at, at, at adapting uh, um, stories, um, some, some famous stories such as A Wrinkle in Time. Pope Larson's adaptation of Madeline Langle's sci-fi classic for children is, is absolutely brilliant. Um, Larson produces high, quali high quality coming of age stories featuring female protagonists with the most recent Mercury published in 2010. She might have something even, even more recent than that, um, which, which, which Mercury, in, she, her stories always kind of include a fantasy element to highlight the, um, the emotional stakes of the stories or the um, author illustrator she's trying to adapt, such as Madeline Langle. Um, to quote Booklist Starred Review, to quote, this adaptation is fabulous for presenting a fresh vision for those familiar with the original, but it's so true to the story soul that even those who've never read it will come away with a genuine understanding of Langle's ideals and heart. And so moving on to teens, you might have heard of Miss Marvel. She's soon to have a tea, her very own TV show on Disney+. Plus. Miss Marvel is the groundbreaking heroine that has become an international sensation. Camilla Khan is an ordinary girl from Jersey City, but she's suddenly empowered with extraordinary gifts and wants to try to live up to her hero, Miss Marvel, who is now Captain Marvel. So what is she to do? And how does she deal with being the new Miss Marvel and being a teenager and being a Muslim and being an inhuman at the same time? Find out if she takes the Marvel Universe by storm. This is written by G. Willow Wilson, and it's a stunning graphic novel about a typical teenage American girl experience and all the struggles and pressures that come with assimilation and fitting in while retaining your bonds to your family and your history and your religion. Um, and then on top of that, trying to fit the cultural boxes and being a superhero. It's really great. It's wonderful. Read it. You'll love it. Miles Morales is similar in this vein. Um, this, is the, this is the comic series that started it all and you know, gave us, um, without we would not have um, uh, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, uh, this and alongside of um, the Spider-Verse comic series. Um, so when Peter Parker falls, the real needs a new Spider-Man and young Miles Mor Morales takes up the mantle. So this, this comic series gives us exact, you know, how he got by, how Miles got bit by, the, by um, a spider, um, what his uncle Aaron is up to, the prowler. Um, he introduces us to his best friend Genki. It's, um, it's really great. And so, you know, how is Miles going to handle his new costume? How is he gonna handle these new powers? 
Is there any way he can face the deadly sting of Scorpion? Find out if Miles Morales can live up to the legacy of Spider-Man, and I think we all know the answer. He can. So this New York Times bestselling graphic novel, this is a book by the New York Times bestselling graphic novelist, Jean Lang. American-born Chinese tells the story of three apparently unrelated characters. Jin Wang, who moves to a new neighborhood with his family, only to discover that he's the only Chinese-American student at his new school. The powerful Monkey King, subject to one of the oldest and greatest Chinese fables, and, Ken, and Chen Qi, the, the personification of the ultimate negative Chinese stereotype, who is ruining his cousin Danny's life with his yearly visits. Their lives and stories come together in unexpected twists in this action-packed modern fable. American-born Chinese is an amazing ride, all the way up to the astonishing climax, and has won multiple awards. So we, here at the library, we also have a decent manga collection. And manga is essentially Japanese comic books or graphic novels. It's an umbrella term for a wide variety of comic books and graphic novels originally published and produced in Japan. Unlike American comic books, which are usually printed in color, full color, Japanese manga is almost always black and white. Japanese manga is read left to right rather than left to uh, right to left rather than left to right. <laughs> Excuse me there, um, which is the norm for English language publications. This can take some getting used to if you have only ever read English publications, as as it often feels like you're reading backwards. But you'll hardly notice once you practice enough. So one of the stories that we collect here at the library is the Full Metal Alchemist which um, is basically about uh, a ritual going wrong. And um, there's this man named, or this uh, teenage boy named Edward, Edward Eric, who loses his arm and his leg, and his brother Afonso becomes nothing but a soul trapped in a suit of armor. Though their circumstances are tragic, and these spoofs penned by series author Kairo Mule Erakawa, the brother's quest to reclaim their bodies is completely hilarious and action-packed, and a little bit dark. So if you enjoy this, you, you might want to check out the TV show that's on Netflix, or at least it should still be on Netflix. Witch Hat A Terrier um, is a Japanese manga series written and illustrated by Kamomi Shirahama, a beautifully illustrated story about a girl who longs for magic in her life and learns that on the inside she already has, or already is what she, she needs to be. And, and, um, it's reminiscent of Studio Ghibli. If you've seen any movies by Hayao Miyazaki, the illustrations just remind me so much of his work. Um, they're lushly, it's a lushly drawn story, and it was voted one of the top 10 manga of the year back in 2018 um, when it was first produced by the Japanese manga industry. So, moving on to graphic novels for adults. And once again, some of these um, teens could read, you know, there's there's thin lines on some of these um, with, with interests. Um, Watchmen is one of the most popular graphic novels for adults. It's sold over a million copies and is the first thing people mention when talking about comics for adults. It's the only graphic novel to take, to or rather to make times 100 best novels list. And it's been on many other um, lists throughout the years. And um, everyone from film director Zack Snyder and Darren Aronofsky to the writers of Lost are influenced by this story. Um, Watchmen takes place in an alternative world where the mere presence of American superheroes changed history. The US won the Vietnam War, Nixon is still president, the Cold War is in full effect. It begins with a murder mystery before unfolding into a planet, planet altering conspiracy. When a retired hero is killed, his former teammates must investigate. This conspiracy they uncover will entwine their secret traumas and twisted psychologies, ultimately asking, where's the fine line in drawing between heroes and villains? This is a landmark work in the superhero genre. Another landmark work um, was written by Will Eisner, and it's called A, Can a Contract with God and Other Timid Stories. Um, and it was published in 1978. The book's short story cycle revolves around poor Jewish characters who live in a tenement in New York City. Eisner produced two sequels set in the same tenement, A Life Force in 1988 and Dropsy Avenue in 1995. Though the term graphic novel did not originate with Eisner, the book is credit, credited with um, popularizing its use. Paper Girls is awesome. Um, it's a mystery science fiction comic book series written by Brian K. Vaughn and illustrated by Cliff Chang, published by Image Comics. 
It follows uh, the story of four 12-year-old newspaper delivery girls set in Stony Stream, a fictional suburb of Cleveland, Ohio. While out delivering papers on the morning after Halloween, the town is struck by an invasion from a mysterious force from nature. The girls become unwillingly caught up in the conflict between two warring factions of time travelers. Time travelers. If you love Stranger Things or Doctor Who, this is the comic for you. And it's perfect for mature teens and adults. So Neil Gaiman is highly respected in the um, comics field um, for his series Sandman. But I'm going to focus on a lesser known title of his. It's an eight issue comic book run that was published in 2003 by Marvel Comics it's called Marvel of 1602. And basically the premise is um, it's an alternative timeline where Marvel superheroes exist in the uh, uh, Elizabethan era. And they're faced with the destruction of their world by a mysterious force. They must team up to save the universe. Of course, that's what Mar Marvel superheroes do. Um, many of the early Marvel superheroes, Nick, Nick Fury, X-Men, Fantastic Four, Spider-Man, Captain America, as well as villains such as Dr. Doom and Magneto appear in various roles. Um, I think uh, teens and adults will get a kick out of this. Monstrous is an absolutely incredible comic book that has um, Japanese art and manga influences um, alongside of like Art Deco. Um, it's just, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous high fantasy series um, written by Mamoru and um, with art by uh, Sanat Tanaka. Tekta. Sorry, if I mispronounced her name. Um, and it's since it was published uh, in 2015 by Image Comics, it's just the fan base has grown. The comic was described by the Los Angeles Review of Books as, to quote, ambitious as George R. R. Martin or J.R. Tolkien, end quote, for its high fantasy concepts and heavy world building. It's won many awards, including the Eisner Awards, four Hugo Awards, and others. It's an original fantasy epic for mature readers that's about um, a young girl who risked everything to control her psychic link between a monster of tremendous power, placing her in the center of a devastating war between human and other worldly forces. And there's, like, talking cats. It's cool. So, Akira is a, <clears throat> a very popular adult, and I would say mature teen, um, manga series. Um, it's basically a post-apocalyptic story um, set in Neo-Tokyo, where Tokyo was annihilated um, from a blast of unknown origin that triggered World War, World War III. And basically, the lives of two streetwise teenage friends link up and change forever when paranormal abilities begin to awaken in one of them, making them a target for a shadowy agency that will stop at nothing to prevent another catastrophe, like the one that leveled Tokyo. At the core of the agency's motivation is a raw, all-consuming fear of the unthinkable, monstrous power known as Akira. It's a great, great story. Um, there's like six or seven or eight volumes. We have them all here at the library. Check them out. Check out the movie version as well. It is wonderful too. And now I would like to just briefly show you how to look up graphic novels in our catalog. So you could just do a general search with all fields, graphic novel. There's multiple ways to do this. And it will bring up ebooks that are um, that you can read. Uh, in Hoopla, so all you would need is your library card and um, and to download the Hoopla app, and you can read graphic novels through Hoopla. We have a whole bunch of them. Um, in fact, let me just click that. And I'll, there's a lot of great options. The Stranger Things comic book. So let's go back here. And let's just click Format Books, Include. So one thing you could do is you can narrow it down by adult, juvenile, or teen. So you can find graphic novels in three places here in the library, in a juvenile section, our children's section, our teen section, and our adult section. Um, so when you're looking for a, a juvenile one in the catalog, it will say graphic J for juvenile. So that lets you know it's a children's uh, graphic novel. And the Babysitter's Club comics are very, very popular. Um, if you see um, graphic T, that means it's for teen. You can also select this over here. So teen fiction, teen nonfiction to see what you get. Yep, and it's bringing up all the graphic novels that we have. 
Um, we don't separate manga out. That's included as a, gra as a graphic novel. So for adults, the call number is a little bit different. Um, it's graphic 741. And this will bring up all the books that we have in our adult graphic novel collection. And you'll find that collection, it's basically the very, it's at the start of our nonfiction collection on the west wall of the library. Um, you can place a hold on these items if you wish with your library card and pin number and pick it up in front so you don't even have to come in and browse during COVID. Um, and other than that, I hope you learned something about graphic novels today. I hope you found something you want to read. And if you have any questions or anything, feel free to reach out and contact me. All right. Thank you. Have a good day.